Hey horror fans, welcome back to room 237. Coming at you with <clears throat> excuse me. Another Silver Age horror film. Another uh, a bit surprise film. House on Haunted Hill, which I don't own by itself. Once again, it is part of this 50 horrors classic pack that I have. House on Haunted Hill came out in 1959. By this time, Vincent Price was already a huge horror star. Um, I think House of Wax was his first film, was horror-wise. First film in 53. So he was already a well-established leading horror man. And my last review, I said Last Man on Earth is probably my favorite Price film. This one's up there, too. I mean, yeah, it is known as one of his biggest, most classic films ever. Uh, House on Haunted Hill is a very popular name. Um, it, it was remade in 1999 with Chris Kattan for some reason. I saw that when I was a kid on cable. Don't remember shit from it. That had a shitty sequel. Um, I don't think The Haunting of Hill House has anything to do with it but um because the funny thing is if you follow my channel you know that one of my least favorite horror subgenres is paranormal I, I'm just I'm not a fan of ghost movies and I just want to see if this was based on a book or anything I don't think it is Nope. Directed by William Castle, written by Rob White, which William Castle, um, he was a producer for Rosemary's Baby. What else did he do? Um, nothing that's coming to mind, at least. Okay, I've heard of Macabre from 1958. Tingler, 59, I've heard of. The Old Dark House, okay. 63 remake, that's also a 40s film. Okay, so yeah, he, he has done some stuff. William Castle. Uh, so yeah, I, I don't think Netflix's The Haunting of Hill House has anything to do with this. Because where I was going was paranormal films. I'm usually not a fan. Of course, The Shining's my favorite film of all time. I do like John Carpenter's The Fog. And this movie's not supernatural, believe it or not. And even though it's not, the ghostly stuff they do in it works. I mean, this is a really creepy movie. The atmosphere, the, the look of some of the gags, some of them are really cheap. You know, I think everyone remembers the one of the old lady with white eyes like coming out. That's a creepy ass moment. Pretty much the story is um, there's this married couple, uh, uh, the Lawrence, Frederick and the wife. Frederick Lauren is a uh, bit surprised he's this eccentric a uh, millionaire who is hosting this party at hill house this old uh reputedly ha haunted mansion and he's running it out and so he calls upon these five strangers strangers to him and his wife and strangers to each other and if they can Stay in the house, stay alive, until 8 in the morning, they'll each receive $10,000. It's one of those cases where they have caretakers, uh, they lock the door, there's bars to the windows. Which makes it sound like it's owned by the city, but the house's owner is there. Because, uh, or maybe he owned it at one point, um... Alicia Cook plays this guy, uh, Watson Pritchard, who's this really paranoid guy. Like supposedly his sister-in-law murdered his brother and their 
child. There was a series of other murders at different times. He's all messed up. He think he believes in ghosts and everything. Um, there's this <clears throat> woman that's a journalist, played by Julie Mitchum, who was the sister of Robert Mitchum, who was in the original Kate Fear. He played the Max Cady character that Robert De Niro played in the remake. And then you got this guy, Lance, played by Richard Long, a doctor, played by Alan Marshall, and this other woman, played by Carolyn Craig. And at first, it starts off, like, they get a little tour of the house, and Vincent Price is, like, a very, he is eccentric, but he's also acting kind of ghouly, like, who knows what kind of ghosts will pop up in the night, and... And they go down to the wine cellar where there was a supposed murder. And the big vat of wine is still filled with acid from a previous murder. Foreshadowing. And basically there's just all these gags that keep popping up. Like the one woman, Nora, she's sort of the target for all the supernatural. Like there's a part where she's sort of like back down this hallway. And that old lady with the crazy hair, the white eyes coming out at her very well done very spooky you kind of get the idea that Price and his wife hate each other I mean this is his fourth wife You kind of get the idea that you know maybe she's much younger maybe he married her because she's young and beautiful she married him because he's rich they're not meshing it's alluded to that she might have attempted murder on him in the past. Can't be proven. And he, he thinks she has it out for him. And so there's even a part where you know he gives everyone a gun, but it's done, you know, in kind of a macabre fashion with these little coffins on the table. Everyone gets a gun. And I I would say that this movie's more of like an Agatha Christie kind of mystery thriller it does have like a 10 little indians kind of vibe like okay so these people are gonna drop off one by one until you know there's a winner that's not the case there is a big twist so i'm gonna say spoilers here yeah i'm holding up this i don't know why so if if you like old classic horror movies and like vincent price Definitely check out House on Haunted Hill, the original 1959 film. It is a great mystery. It does have twists and turns that you know you don't see coming that aren't predictable. The stuff that is done for spooks, like the lady with the white eyes or the woman outside the window with the rope. You know, great spooky gags that work. The one with the skeleton at the end is kind of cheesy, but it's supposed to. So yeah, definitely check out House on Haunted Hill. Um, for some reason, the wife commits suicide by hanging. And through all these things, you find out that the reason why these people were picked was because the doctor, who specializes in like psychology for hysteria or specifically hysteria, is having an affair with the wife. She faked her death. They were purposely trying to spook and scare this one woman, Nora, to drive her to hysteria and try to, you know, leave breadcrumbs around so eventually her and Vincent Price will cross paths. She will be so scared that she'll shoot anything and kill him. That's the first twist, which I didn't see coming. And then, even further, supposedly Vincent, she does shoot him, so you think success. But then I knew something was going to happen because when the doctor was getting ready to put Price into the vat of acid, it just kind of went black before we heard like uh, the sizzling. So like, okay, there's going to be something else. So when the wife goes down to check this, it is goofy kind of skeleton starts coming out with Vincent Price's voice like oh my murderess you got my money and but you won't live to see it and 
pretty much scares her into falling into the acid. So that's when Price, it's got this big thing with like pulleys and well, he rigged the pistols with blanks. He found it. He knew about the affair. And pretty much that's when everyone else in the house finds out. He's just like, well, they wanted to commit the perfect crime. This was their murder game, but they didn't know I was playing. And I'm ready to see if I'm guilty or innocent. And then it just ends. And I really like movies like that. Like, the the little bits that are ghostly and spooky do work for it being a horror film. But I would say this is more of a mystery, like a mystery thriller. But it all works wonderfully. I, I thought it was very entertaining. I was very into it. You know, the more I get into these old black and white classics, just the more gems I find. I really do not remember the 1999 remake with Chris Kattan. I don't care to see it at all. But this is up there with The Last Man on Earth for uh, Vincent Price films. He is a different character. Like This is probably one of his bigger roles. Where he's like the horror villain. You know, because he really is just like a... Well, like... And Mr. Price plays it so well. And all, all the other actors do a great job. Like the... Alicia Cook, the paranoid guy. I mean, some of his... Dialogue was a little silly. Like, even right in the beginning of the film, he's like... The ghosts, they're already on, on to us. They don't want us here. But I, I, I enjoyed it. And I was actually surprised that it's not supernatural. It's known as one because Haunted House, but all the ghost stuff is being, you know, what I'm looking for, uh, manipulated on purpose. So it is more of just like a gag house, if anything. But, you know, even if they did go supernatural, the gags worked. It wasn't cheesy like all these... Not so much found footage ones, because that's its own fucking monster, but... You know, like... Sinister, or The Ring, or any, like... Super modern, especially since like 2009 or 10, ghost movie, haunted house movie, a haunting in, insert state name. Those movies don't interest me. I don't find them scary. I don't find them entertaining. I find them cheesy, hokey, boring, and shitty. Again, this one's not supernatural, but again, if it was, the gags would have worked. And I, I would have liked it as much as I like The Shining or John Carpenter's The Fog. Another solid Vincent Price classic horror film. Another solid Silver Age horror film. Highly recommend House on Haunted Hill. Anyway, thank you for watching.